so we want to create a guessing game. I admit this will not be a best-selling game, but it will teach us the basics of if and loop. So we'll create a game where we'll assign a variable between 1 and 100, and then we will let the user guess the number. If the user is wrong, then we want to give him or her another guess to guess it, and we can give him a hint saying that guess higher or guess lower. Let's see how we can build that and at the same time learn about if and loop. So go to Microsoft Power Automate for desktop and then click new flow here. And I will call it if and loop and I'll click create. There you go. First, we will assign a variable with our secret number. So if I go over here to input output variables, I can create a variable. I can also create it with set variable. That just depends on what you want. An input variable that can come from another place in the Microsoft universe. So let's practice using that. There'll be no difference to it. So if I click add argument, input, and then I'll click create it. I'll say secret number like this, and then I'll delete the rest here. I'll give it a default value. Let's just pick 62, that's fine. I'll also give it the same name as external name. There's no difference to it. We'll not use the external name here, but it's just nice to do it if you want to do it in the future. Then I'll click create. The only difference that is, is to create it here than what we're used to in the flow is that when we don't map it to another place in the Microsoft universe, the Power Automate for desktop runner will ask us if we want to use this value. That's fine for now. Don't worry about it. Just know that you can create your variables up here instead. So now we will ask the user to pick in a number. So I'll say input dialog here. I'll find a display input dialog and we can call this guessing game. And then we can say pick a number between one and 100 like this. We can see that the user input, that is the value that the user has been providing. And remember that this, even though the user provides a number, it will get stored as a text. That is fine. And we can see that this user input, that is the user input that the user will provide. So let's rename this. And this one will be the user number. So that will be the guest number. Let's rename it. You don't have to use the percentage sign. If I do this and then I click back, back, Power Automate for desktop automatically adds these. That is fine. I'll click save. So now we have a secret number and we let the user guess. Let me show you how that works. So if I click run here and let me just drag in this guessing game input dialog, I can give it a number. So if I say 45, then I click OK. Nothing really happens because we haven't made any comparison yet. But as you can see here, we have the button press. That was the OK. We don't use that variable, but the guest number that is 45. These uh, flow variables only have values when the robot runs, but we can inspect them afterwards. That is nice when we want to debug or develop like here. Now use an if. So go over to your actions and search for an if and drag it in. Here we will ask whether or not these two are equal to each other. So I will say, if I click this X here, I'll say secret number. Is that equal to guest number? Then we know that the user has guessed right. I click save. And if asks a question here in the condition, and then if this is true, the actions in between here, that is here, they will be performed. So uh, they will only be performed if the condition is true. So now I can find a display message like this. I drag it in here. So here I can say, congrats, you guessed the secret number like this. That is fine. We click save. And now when we run the flow, let me try to run it once more. I will drag in this input dialog. I'll make a wrong guess first. I'll take 12. Nothing happened. That is because this one is not true. These ones are not equal to each other. If I click run once more, and if I guess the right number, I'll pick 62. I will have the you guess the secret number. 
this display message will be performed because the condition is true. So far, so good. But this one will only one run once. We also need to make it run over and over to make sure that the game will run until the user has picked the right number. We will use a loop for that. So I'll search for a loop like this, and then I'll pick the loop condition. I'll drag it in above the if, because the if will come to the last. That will be if our user has guessed correct, then this one will go in. Now, a loop will run. It's a bit the same as an if. And if we we'll look at the condition like we had here, then run this once. A loop will also look at the condition and then run over and over as long as the condition is true. Let me show you. So now I'll say if the user has guessed right wrong, then I run this loop to run over and over until the user has picked the correct number. That is the secret number at the, the value of the secret number. So here again, I'll say secret number like this. And then I'll say not equal to that means that the user has guessed wrong because if I map it, or if I compare it to the guessed number here, so I'll say as long as these two are not equal, that means that the guest number, that is the one that the user puts in, is not equal to this. Then the user has been guessing wrong, then this loop will run over and over. I can just put in another display dialog. I'll copy this. We'll make a little bit more advanced solutions in a few minutes, but let's just pick this one first. I'll drag it in. So control V and drag it in here. Here, I will just ask for the number again. Later on, we will give hints. So let me try to run it and see that it actually works. We know that it is 62, let me drag it in. So if I keep guessing wrong, and I need to keep picking these input dialogs in, then this flow will run over and over. And first, when I pick the correct number, then this condition will not be true anymore. We will jump outside the end and evaluate on here. And now this one will be true, so we will get this uh, congratulation message. So far, so good. So now we, we both used an if and a loop. Now we just need to give the users hints. So when we're here and the user has guessed wrong, we want to give him or her a hint. So we will we need to evaluate whether the secret number is less than the guest number or if it's higher. What do you think about the quality of this lesson? Please post it in the comment below. That will help me a lot. Thank you. So I first find an if. We'll have an if in here that will ask, is this secret number less than the guest number? So if I find an if, we'll drag in the if here. So now we will say, is the secret number lower than the guest number? That means that the guest number is too high. The user has guessed too high. So I find a variable here. I'll say secret number. Is that less than the guest number here? Then the guest number is too high. We will tell the user that. So I'll click Save. And let's just drag in this display input dialog. We'll use that one here. So I'll double click to open it and drag it inside the if. So right in front here, I'll say you guessed too high. Pick a number between 1 and 100. Again, we will store it into the guest number. So now we have it. If the user has guessed too high, then we'll tell him or her that. Now we'll just have an else. So search for an else here and drag it in underneath the if. And if will perform this action if this condition is true, else it will do something else. We can use that. So again, copy the display input dialog and paste it in here and then just drag it down here. So we know that if this is not true, that means that the guest number is lower than the secret number. And we can say that uh, you guess too low, pick a number between one and 100. So we'll just fix this and then we'll click save. Now let's verify that this actually works. So I drag in this. So if I put in 12, that will definitely be lower. Then I want a message saying that, let me drag this in. You guessed too low, that was fine. Let us just do once more. 25, you guessed too low. You can even see where we are. We are in this branch here, we guessed too low. Now let's guess too high to verify that this also worked. 75, you guessed too high. So this loop works. 
it will ask us over and over because we have guessed wrong, and then we'll get hints based on whether or not we have guessed too high or too low. And let's have a 62, and we guess the secret number. Now we will add another thing. Because here we have created an infinite loop that will run over and over. I know we can click cancel, but imagine a robot with a unlimited loop. That will mean that we can create a robot that will run forever if we don't notice it. That is very bad practice. So we will uh, say that this loop should only run like 10 times or a number that is suitable. So to do so, I'll have a variable. That one will be a counter. So I'll start by one, so I'll find a set variable. This one will be set in the beginning up here. I will call this counter, so go into the name here, call it counter, and give it the value one. So this is just a helping variable that we will use. So this one will be one the first time it runs, and then in the end of the loop, we'll give it a two, three, four, and then we'll say, if this value is larger than 10, then we want the loop to stop running. Let me show you how to build it. This is also a very nice exercise. It's necessary in your loop, so you don't create loops that run forever. So drag in another set variable in the end of the loop. The name, that will still be counter. And here we will add one to that counter that will be in the end of the loop. So click the X here, find the counter. To add one to this variable, Simply just go inside the percentage sign and press plus one, then click save. So now we add one for each one of the rounds. We don't do nothing with the value yet. So now we want to make a condition say like 10 times or maybe 15, whatever. Just pick a number between 10 and 20, your lucky number, for example. And then we want the loop to run these times. It's not that important. It's just important that we'll create some sort of a border. So if I go into the loop condition, now we will change this a bit. Because when we need to have two conditions, we will run this loop whether or not these two are not equal to each other. That means that the user has guessed wrong. But we also only want to run it when the counter is less than e.g. 11. To do so, we will introduce the AND in the condition. This is a bit more advanced, but try to understand it or at least build it with me. And then we will copy the guest number up here. And we will say, is this, we'll do the exact same thing as before. We'll say not equal to guest number. It is uh, done like this. You can even see it here. Then this can be true or false. And what I will do here is that I'll say, is this expression equals true? That means that these two numbers are different. Different. You can just repeat the video or rewind to uh, discover what's going on here because this is quite important. So if this is true, that means that the numbers are not the same. The user has to get wrong. So I'll do like this. I'll say true. So if this expression is true, then we want the loop to run once more. Let me show you that it actually works. We have not implemented the counter yet, but let me try to run it. Let me drag it in here. So if I say 12, we will run once more. It will work exactly like before. And I can even guess too high. That is fine, and I will get the right number. So now we just need to implement the counter. And the reason we change this condition is so we can make an AND up here. To do so, I'll say AND, and then we can use our another expression. Here I'll just say, is our counter less than 11? Then we want to run it. So if I click Save here, and now this loop will run 10 times. And if we haven't guessed the right number by then, it will jump to the end. And then it will say, well, you haven't guessed this one. This condition is not right. So we will go to the end. No message will come because we haven't guessed the right number. Let me show you. So I will just be making 10 random guesses, uh, either too high or too low to show you. So the counter, you can see it here. Do like this. Seventy-nine. That's my year of birth. I'm not getting any younger, unfortunately, but that's okay. Pick one. Pick two. So we will just need to have the counter up all the way. So it will run whenever the counter is ten, and then when it's eleven, it will stop running. So we'll run two times more. Here. And I'll pick number three. 
Now the loop stopped because the counter was 11. So it will not run the loop anymore because both conditions need to be true. We have an and here and we didn't perform this if. That's right. Let's just add one other thing. We have a static number here. That is a secret number. Let's generate a random number instead. Couldn't that be nice? So I'll delete my secret number up here. Delete it. It will give us an error. That's fine because we used the secret number a couple of times. But find a generate random number like this and drag it in in the end. This one will generate a random number. Remember to have it 1 to 100 because we asked the user for a number between 1 and 100. The other one will be a bit tricky. Now rename the variables produced the name here to secret number. And since I'm lazy, I'll only take the start like this. So now I'm assigning the secret number randomly. And if I run it in here from, I can just remember to click save because we haven't have auto saved on and I can click run. I can of course see it is being generated here so I can inspect it. But, and let me just guess right. That's it, we guess the secret number. But the trick is if I am uh, minimizing this, and if I go here, and if I run the automation outside here, we will not be able to see the debugging window. So now I'm completely on my own. I'll pick 75, guess too high, and I'll say 45, guess too high still, 25, too low, and let me just... I guess the correct number. So that's it. So we can use the random number. And if we just start it from outside, the user will not know. Now you learned about if and loop, very important concepts. You know about advanced conditions using the and, and we talk about counter variables to make our loop not go on forever. That is the best practice that you'll need to learn. If you missed something, just rewind the video. And else the next lesson is here on the screen, just go click it.